Hello YouTube and uh, welcome back. In my last video I was looking at this uh, 2 kilowatt inverter that powers the shed. We noticed a couple of problems with it so for once it was the dead spider. We also had leaky or oh, leaky caps, burnt resistors and various other things wrong with it. Broken wires. So I've had to look and think about what to do about fixing this. And I priced up a number of the components that I needed. But anyway, long story short, I found a fix and that's my fix. I bought a brand new EP Ever Sunroof Inverter. This is a P2000 model. Two kilowatt inverter, 1.6 kilowatt continuous, two kilowatt peak. And uh, yeah, all is good. There's a label on the back for some of the specifications. And on the front, we've just got a single socket and a dip switch to enable different frequencies and voltage outputs. And that's all we need, really. So what I'll do is now take off the temporary solution, which I'll superbly put on, and then screw this one on the wall and wire it all up. These wire termination terminals are quite uh, nice and sturdy, so you've got a nice copper slug there that you bolt your cable to, and then you've got a nice little black cover, or red cover for the positive, that goes on there with a little nut. That keeps all of the uh, connections hidden and safe. I like that. Because I suppose what you could have had is a piece of metal come along, Touch there and shut that out, and then you would have a big explosion on your hands. So yeah, I like that. So do the other one, and then I'll put it on the wall. Yeah, I've changed, decided to change the uh, cables as well, because these are the cables that came with it. They're nice, shiny copper, properly rated for it. Nice crimp connections, you can see the crimps, and, well, one of them, you can see the crimps. Must have been that one. And uh, yeah, and they're nicely done. So I'll go with the cables, I'll change them. So that's the relatively safe task of screwing it to the wall plugged in already because you know I'm impatient so it's off um, now we've just got to connect the power up to it now there's a few ways you can do this to make this safe so what I'm going to do is do the neg the positive side first because it's the negative side that's protected in case there was a short the BMS should protect the negative side so do the positive side first because that's the most dangerous side we'll just connect it here and leave this connected to the wall because if I did the other way around and took that off first, this would be flailing around and could short the battery. But by taking it off here, this is isolated. So you take it off here, connect the red, take it off there, connect the black, and when you connect the black, use a pre-charge resistor, otherwise you'll get a nice big spark, because this has got those are caps on the input. So that's how I'm going to connect it up. Right, it's on, it's connected. There was no flash, there's no sparks. Did it all very slow, very methodically, and it's all connected up. Turn it on, have a power light, which is all golden, and we're putting power back into the shed now. We'll take it back from the shed, and if you look here, on my meter, we've got 230 volts, which is awesome. Oh, so uh, yeah, let's put it under load. Drawing 330, 340 watts. Voltage is still uh, saved a little bit, 229. That's still good though, isn't it? Still 130, 1 1.4 amps. That's a little 400 watt heater I've got running, and it's working. Very happy with that. I'll keep my eye on it, make sure it's all okay, and let it run for a little bit. But we have power back in the shed again. Inverter fixed by buying a new one. This, incidentally, I've managed to get from um, Black Friday sale, so uh. You can tell when I film this, uh, but yeah, it's all working. Quality, early Christmas present for myself. So, hope you like that video, and uh, I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.